before I can understand the Oaspe's Bible, I need to know what the Oaspe Bible is. Today we have two people going to explain what it is, where it came from, and how has it impacted our society. Today we have author Susan B. Martinez and a brand new guest she's bringing with her, Peter Hargens, who's going to be live in studio, and I'm excited to talk about the Owaspi Bible. I'm Tony Sweet with Truth Be Told. Please welcome to the Truth Be Told studios, Peter Hargens and author Susan B. Martinez. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us on this Friday afternoon. You're quite welcome. Um, we have Peter in studio. It's rare we get anybody in studio, but uh, Susan has been with us before. So, Dr. Susan Martinez, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I am amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, I can't believe it's almost April of 2022. But uh, one thing I always like to do is discuss religions and spirituality because a lot of people in this world, you know, like I'm a, I'm a Sagittarius. We're seekers of truth. And we, 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 we search for peace and we search for uh a connection to the other side through loved ones and, you know, death of our ancestors. And, and so we're always fi trying to find out our, who our past is and what, and, uh, what's, what's next after this life. And when you brought to me this, uh, Osprey, Ospi, is o that right? O Ospi. O Ospi, uh, Bible. I was like, I have never in my life heard of that before. So I want to thank you both for coming on the show and talking about that. So um, who wants to who wants to start and tell us where this Bible and this religion started? Uh, Susan, you want to uh, give uh, the I was just background? about to say, Peter, would you like to? <laughs> uh, okay, shall we uh, toss a planet? What should we do here? All right, Peter, let's just go. You can, you can. All right, the, the, um, the gentleman who was the medium for it, so I think I might make it clear, that again, as I was talking to you before you came on the air, that 1848-1850 period was the, bir the explosion of knowledge right. of that dwarfed the last 500 years, both in spiritual or religious understanding and scientific hmm. understanding. <clears throat> and there had been um, a lot of research done, and at this the people who did the research into spirituality here weren't necessarily religious people. They were the scientists of that day who called themselves psychic investigators. Oh, okay. And okay. they were trying to find the questions to these ancient the ancient questions. And to kind of get to Newborough's thing, Newborough's mother was a spiritualist, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, I think his father was a regular minister or something. Is that correct? I'm not sure. He was a farmer and a teacher. Okay. So, and it turned out that um, Newber had um, spiritual or psychic abilities, the ability to clairvoyance, clear audience. Right, right. Uh, but he also, in his investigations, was would would also um, uncover phonies, hmm. um, and then there's the ones you can't explain. Right. So I don't want to get too long in the backstory here. Right. Um, and but he was he was investigating the mystery, and he was he had initially been tr trained as a doctor, but became a dentist because. It, he found doctoring just was too bloody. Spe <laughs> I guess especially back back in the 1800s, right. uh, late 1800s. And um, he was having these different experiences and visiting mediums and asking various questions. Uh, he also worked in the gold fields in California. Um, and, he, and Australia. Australia, too. Didn't know that one. And yeah. got to be of a little means as well, hmm. which doesn't hurt if you're going to want to travel around the world and investigate stuff. Um, so which and is he, what he did. Definitely. So he, he gets to the point where he's investigating. Um, the story, as I understand it, uh, is that 
it, this one night, the whole room, uh, this one night, the whole room was filled with light and were all these faces in the room. And they asked, the, the, the voice or the voices in the room asked him if he would want to do a work for the creator. Um, and, I, and to do it, though, he had to purify himself by doing a total vegetarian diet, which we would say today a vegan diet. Mm, right. um, no animal, nuts, vegetables, fruits, um, porridges, such as that. And he um, decided to do that, um, and that was in the, in the 70s. I think it was like a 10-year journey. Um, at the end of it, he was told to buy a typewriter. <laughs> um, he said, I don't know how to type. And, you know, these were the, those first typewriters. Right, so it's not too many did. Right. Yeah. And they said to just sit at the table and, you know, just put the hands over. And, but basically, he was entranced. And as much as I believe this, I always try to say, suppose you can't, you, one thing Owaspi says, spirit can't prove corpora or materiality, and materiality can't prove corpora. Right. So these experiences become very subjective experiences. Anyway, he's told not to look at anything he writes until he's finished, you know, to like turn the pit test, right? And he went into trance, and it's a it's been edited different times, but let's say it turned out to be about an 800 and something book dealing with the history of the earth for 78,000, counting these years, let's say 78,173 years of of man. Right. Um, which what uh, Susan was talking about in the sinking of Pan, the first large population of the world um, in the South Pacific had a civilization that lasted before the sinking of the island or the continent um, about 40 about 40 or 44 thousand years um, the main thrust here is to understand in this book the degrees <coughs> and working of the unseen dimensions which right. we would call heaven in the book, it's also referred to as the intermediate world or the, the bound atmospheric realms to this planet hmm. that travel in the orbit of this planet. Right. Um, and it talks about the, the structure of the heavens. So here, what the major thing in this book is, to make a big difference between the concept of God and gods and the creator, that the term God in this book can refer to the creator in the, sim the same way we say a president, a king, right. a ruler, a supervisor. <clears throat> right. But the creator is the creator. The creator is the all in all, beyond and overall. So you could say the gestalt of, of being. Right. Uh, for those who may not know gestalt, the, the, which is the, that which is the sum of, uh, greater than the sum of all its parts. Um, and it describes the lower heavens of the earth, the um, higher heavens, which have, uh, they have like the earthbound, what people might call hells or the, the places where the negative pull behavior people go don't, um, after what we call death. The first resurrection, which is more individualistic, the second resurrection, which is the organized heavens that that look after the doings of society, mm -hmm. and then the third, um, what they call, go the, ahead, Susan. Uh, I just want to inter interject um, that the the Oasis Bible is, is unique in a number of ways, but the one that I want to mention now, which. Uh, your comments uh, remind me of is that it has an upper book and a lower book. Can mm. can you describe that? Okay, um, it's written in a again a, not all the books in it, but there's an upper book which goes into the doings of the particular administration of the really higher heavens over the this intermediate heavens that we have around the planet. <laughs> or I, I'd I'm like gonna, to say that that there. That the page, when you look at the page, uh, there's a line, 
there's a horizontal line in the middle of the page, and the upper book is what's ab above the line, and the lower book is what's below the line, and uh, they are related uh, narratives, but the upper book deals strictly with the uh, happenings in, in the heavens of the earth, <laughs> and the lower book uh, 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 deals with the uh, earth happenings, and their uh, contem contemporary are... are you could say that, Peter, that they're contemporary. Yeah, they're contemporary of the period of the time. So let's say um, the book of Laika, which is dealing with this, with the, what the Hindus call in, also called in Oasavi, um, Nirvana, but Nirvana has kind of two parts, Etheria, and Nirvana is the highest part. And these are the unbound heavens, the true and I, I'm trying to get out of religious time. The the highest dimensions hmm. that um, individual life can tra transcend to. So let's say say dimensions. Um, um, uh, I, can I can I say something? Yeah, you, Susan, you you uh, got it. You, uh, yeah. with I just, when, when, whenever <laughs> I'm asked to introduce Oaspe, I try to uh, simplify it in my mind by saying that it deals with three major subjects in a unique way. It deals with uh, the records of the race, in other words, what's been going on on this planet for the last 80,000 years. Uh, it deals with science. And it, uh, that's the middle of the book. Uh, there's even a, a fold out, a center fold, uh, in the middle uh, showing the uh, aspect of the heavens in the last 24,000 years. And uh, thirdly, it deals with, let's see, spirit, okay, with spirit. Uh, so there is a, a new science. We call it a new science, and that's uh, referred to as cosmogony. There's science, history, and spirit, basically. And, and the translation of the, the word Owaspi is just earth, sky, and spirit. And, you know, the word ah, I've been seeing this on YouTube because I listen to a lot <coughs> of Native American music, and the, the uh, Native Americans still use the word ah, spelled A-H, <laughs> uh, to denote earth. Uh, so that's included in the, in O A uh, Spe. Spe, of course, is the outer regions. Well, well I have a question. So um, I have a picture of the creator, um, and was it Newsbro? Newsbro? News? I, well, no, the Newbro. 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 The 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 person who it was written through, or if you want to say, wrote it. But we're saying that he was in trance and he, and he wrote it. So the book is supposedly been piped through him. Well, because, I mean, in some ways, I mean, this is very similar, I mean, to the Mormon with, you know, the visions that he, you know, had and wrote the book, you know, the Book of Mormon. Um, so w how many people... Right, that, the method... Go ahead. Method might be the same, but uh, what you have to distinguish is uh, what the source of it is. Right. Uh, I, I want to say um, that uh, uh, throughout Owaspe, and there are uh, many books within Owaspe, 33 of them, uh, uh, 33 plus or minus a few, um, <coughs> the... Um, The, the, there, there is a constant uh, display of the conflict going on between the real, the real gods mm -hmm. and the false gods. And um, once you become familiar with this uh, setup, with this understanding, you, 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 you can begin to recognize what the, what, what the false gods have done. Mm. Uh, Peter might be a good one to talk about the false gods. Yeah, I think what I, and again, I'm trying to put this in language because a lot of people, you know, the, the idea of the unseen, um, it, it's, it's hard to grasp. But um, in the old <coughs> hermetic adage, as be below, so above, as above, so below, that as far as the atmospheric worlds that are connected with this planet, 
it is not much different. There's warfare, right. there's conflict, there's ego. Um, there's something in Owaspi. That, so the false gods, in the concept of the Owaspi, all the false gods initially were mortals on this planet who died and went up in the ranks. So what we call in most religions prophets or considered false gods? What? No, no. Okay. They, you and I die. We mm -hmm. go to the spirit world. Right. We're Joe Nobody. We go right, to schools. Right. Who said? No, it's kidding. Right. Um, <laughs> we, and this is like, as we have schools and nurseries here, right. they have it, but Same there. a yeah. higher vibratory rate. Right. What we get here is science has already been there, given to us when we they think we're ready for it. Right. And, and so... They're all initially trained in the one belief of the one creator and nonviolence and all this. Then just like, just like um, we have tyrants here and times of darkness right. and times of light, so do they there. So when there's a time of darkness in the lower heavens or a chaos, right. the false gods lose belief in an unseen creator and they set up their own kingdoms and m humans are looking for someone to worship who they can hold look at visualize wow um so all the in this in this teaching all the religions that get messed up initially were saying all the same things the false gods or the we could say usurpers in using terms of of uh, earth terms set up these kingdoms these principalities mm -hmm. these nations and as currency as money is some power here followers and people for their heavens is the power with dominion with, if you will with this religion you know with let's say Christianity, there's, um, if you're a good person, you go to heaven. If you're a bad person, you go to hell. What is the theory on that with? Uh, well, I, I just want to correct something. One of the things with Christianity is no matter in the strictest kind of Christianity that came out of the, uh, the um, Council of Nicaea and Constantine, which took the least there were many types of Christianity. Many of them did not believe the early ones that Christ was the son of God. He right. was a prophet and the term right. son of God means someone who spirit or heaven speaks for. Right. Um, and said, you know, the idea here is even if you're good, whatever good you are in, in that religion, if you don't accept Jesus as your savior, you're going to hell. Right. This says good works Love, kindness, nonviolence, no warfare. Right. When the Creator said, Thou shalt not kill, it was as clear for a nation self as it was for an individual. Hmm. Um, so the false gods, whose thing is in power and destruction and setting up their own kingdom. Right. So we, we can look at it as, as what we see when we see revolutions. In fact, we can see this, what's happening in Russia and in Ukraine. Right. That mimics what happens here. But can you, let's say, you know, we said, shall, let's shall not kill. And as we know, I've known a lot of great Christians that have been in the military, went to war and killed many people during war. What, what, what a wasp says, and I hear which is now. Let me make this clear from my own personal opinion. Right now, what also a wasp does stretch, you like the Quakers do. You have to follow your own highest light. Hmm. And I give you an example. There was a General Green in the um, Revolutionary War who was a Quaker. He believed <clears throat> that you shouldn't kill, you shouldn't go to war. But he, at the same time, just like they were Quakers who went in the war in the second, that the moral code, the necessity to, um, it, so one has to make their own choice. In Owaspi, it's saying that 
the Creator said this, meaning not to go to war and to believe that you have you are an eternal being. Now, I'm, I'm trying to do this in the clearest way. So, as power is here, and and I'm saying, um, I honor people who believe, who say, hey, you know, I've got to protect my children, my country. Uh, and, and a lot of times we give them a hard time when they come back. Right. But it's important that that we understand, you know, the soul. So we're, I, I'm getting off. What it mean is that, oh, um, says you have Peter, to think for yourself. Peter, can I? Um, uh, um, let me just finish what, this what one thing. I, we have to think for ourselves. And no matter, there's no book, there's no religion, including this one, right. is there to tell you what to do. You have to eventually have to make your mind. Susan, go ahead. Um, I, as per this uh, conversation, um, I was listening to what you said, and uh, I th it made me think of something that's in Oaspe, which is a definition of the beast. Hmm. The beast. Uh, the two horns of the beast are might and righteousness. So that's where you see the link between the military and the uh, Christianity or whatever religion is dominating that country. Hmm. The two horns of the beast are might and righteousness. I, I would add to that what Owaspi also talks about, and they call, in the Owaspi it's called the Tetrax. In more psychological terms, seven negative character traits that all human beings have that come more from the animal man right. than the, the ethical or spiritual um, man. I, I want to say that uh, Peter's been really uh, working on the Tetrax, particularly this year, and bringing it to our attention. And I'm going going to read them to you, if that's okay. There's seven oh, of I'd, them. I'd love to hear. Uh, it. The first one is is Uz. Uh, I'm sorry, Uk, Uk. It's spelled U K, and it stands for vanity, arrogance, and iniquity. Hmm. Uh, there's also the Hebrew word for it, Aven. Uh, the second one is oh wow, and that stands for tattling and slander, and uh, in Hebrew dibba. Um, isn't that interesting? That oh wow stands for uh, tattling and slander. When you hear something shocking, you go oh wow. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that is pretty. Funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, the third one, the third one is belial, and uh, some some people are familiar with that term, and it stands for worth worthlessness and injustice and the fourth one is uga ga Ush, i'm sorry Ugs ga and that stands for lying and falsehood and joking uh, the evil joking, joking in, in evil the joking in, in the negative <laughs> in the negative sense only <laughs> um the next one is anash and that stands for wickedness and strife and stubbornness the next one is ra the flesh evils and the last one is satan, leadership, and love of admiration. Yeah, and and the the, tet the tetracts were given to the Hebrews, the Vedics, and the Algonquins. And I would also say, see, so it was it, it was global. Uh, right. uh, the Creator's uh, revelations were, was global in each of these periods. What I wanted to revelations, say, which go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I'm okay. No, I'm also, what soon that that what she read that is the larger tetrax. Now the 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 ones that were put on our shoulder are similar, but some of the names are different. Like Anash is stubbornness uh, in word or the, deed. Hister. Hmm. Hello. The Hebrew is his hista. Hista. Um, stubbornness in word or deed that leads to destruction. And that can mean a destruction. I have a bad habit. I'm not letting go of it. Hmm. Okay, all you know, sort yeah. of kind of thing. Um, the the stubbornness is destructive. Right. So, um, mm -hmm. so some of the names where it applies to the person's own seven tetracts, but the other seven tetracts that Susan is like the the larger picture, a national one, or this, or what Owasri refers to as Anramanius. Anramanius 
is perhaps more like what the real say, Satan kind of concept. It is, the way I look at it, it is disunity, where the creator, the all person in the universe, is unity and harmony. So it is the counter force. And the... And here's... The, the and, and there's a point in... There's a point in common with the uh, Holy Bible, the Christian Bible, because I have it in my notes, and I, I never could follow this up, but uh, Reuben, Reuben in the uh, Holy Bible also uh, declared the uh, seven tetracts. Hmm. They may have, may have been called, it's, the word tetract is spelled the same as our word detract, only it begins with a T, not a D. Um, and so you can kind of, visualize it as a detracting uh, from 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 your character you know i went over this list the other day and i identified two two of them that are my problem and i've been working on it ever since yeah, i think that's a, what susan brings an important thing what i want to follow up here <clears throat> is that yes and i i like and this is my own way of doing it because I can't prove something that is <laughs> unless you have the experiences. But the whether you're being harassed by imaginary creatures you invent mm -hmm. or you have neighbors or right. or discarnates, the greatest enemy of ourselves is ourself. <laughs> so the seven tetracts, the the vanity, the conceit that, oh, I'm all that in a bag of chips kind of thing, is we have to know our entry point for anything else negative that can use our own negativity against us. Right. And so in one of the books of OWASP, it talks about for us in the mortal condition, the greatest work is understanding these seven traits, which is similar. All, all change, all change is from within. Yeah. And you don't get change, real change, without it coming from within. So I look at the tetracks. If you're like, like New New York Harbor, you got all these little <laughs> ports. Right. So each you got seven ports, and different vessels come and dock. If your tetracks are in dominance. It's going to be the bad ships with the bad people docking and kind of cheering you on to your own wickedness. Hmm. Um, if the when you the, <clears throat> the more you can overcome your tetracks, um, one of the for an example, one of the kind of trick statements in a way of OSB is it because you know a lot of life here is like a paradox. Right. If you seek leadership. That is selfishness. If you deny leadership when presented to you, that's selfishness. You just seek to do the best you can in the talents that you're given. Mm. And if <clears throat> fame comes, cool. If if um, a um, a chance to be a supervisor comes, and I had that play out in my own life. I worked in one of the first women children's programs in the South Bronx of recovering addicts and they could have up to three of their children in the program, two year live in. And I was offered the, because I had, you know, I had my masters and all, I was offered a supervisor's job as um, uh, second in command of the clinical department. Uh, and I turned it down two times because <laughs> <laughs> Truth, some of my staff were crazier than the, the clients, you know. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Ain't that and, the truth in many, that, many I'm areas? I'm sitting <laughs> there going, whoa, I got out of that. And then I remembered that line from Moaspi. And I went, oops. <laughs> let, <laughs> let me take, let me step back here because I, I don't want all that extra. It's enough I got this caseload and these other folks here. Um, so it is that kind of thing. Really, to go back to the Greek statement, know thyself. Mm -hmm. And so whether we want to get into the concept of other dimensions, right. what we're really talking about is the highest ideals that human beings have ever had, from whatever way, philosophy. So, And the word atheist, 
in the beginning with the uh, with uh, excuse me, I guess that's too close. Um, in the time of the persecution of Jews and Christians, in the earliest times, they were the word atheist applied to them because before the cult of Jesus, the only Son of God, came, he was just a a mouthpiece for the Creator, hmm. um, uh, just a Messiah like right. Moses or or Abraham. Right, um, and <clears throat> so. Believing in something you can't see or hold, you don't believe in the gods, you're an atheist. So the original Christians and the Jews, because as the inner temple in Judaism was just an empty room. There was nothing in it to say, how can you define and imagine or even name our God? Hmm. Wow. So the false gods take I'll give an example, and you you may get some real fired up stuff from some kinds of Christians. We um, like it. We like a little so controversy. When Jesus of Nazareth was said to say, "I am the way and the light," right? M more than likely, what he said was, "The I am is the way, the and the light. The <laughs> I am that I yeah. am." Right, and and you also have to understand language, the 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 Semitic languages and Hamlo-Semitic languages have two to three different meanings to to their words, and it's tonal. Mm -hmm. the The scriptures were copied by the Greeks and the Romans, whose particularly the Romans is much more fixed and you know builder kind of language. Right. <laughs> so you have you have to really, that's why most of the real knowledge was given a mouth to ear because you have the laws written down that can, and same like with the author, you can't, it's a book. It's dead words on a page. Mm -hmm. You have to ask for the light, for the knowledge. Right. So the looking, searching, asking, doing the research of all these different realities and I remember one of the things I was most impressed of going to a, a synagogue when I was young. I grew up in a particularly um, wealthy town that was predominantly Jewish on the Jersey Shore between Long Branch and Asbury Park named Deal. And I go to synagogue with my my friends, and I th they made much more sense than when I went to church with my Christian friends. But in a lot of the commentaries that are made by the rabbis at the bottom of right. the page, are said in such a way they don't always agree it the the and same with us susan and i have you know debated things other 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 of us we have to think analyze understand and one of the things it says in Owasu, that's why one of them is attracted to it no two people can see or understand any uh, in, in the exact same way so we're right. all kaleidoscoping. Sure. We're, we're all individuals. Right, and we're kaleidoscoping our individual. If if I have a cross street, a, a, a cro a, I'm on one corner, you're on another, Dan is on another, Susan's on another, I will tell the truth of my vision. And there's going to be completely different. Or, or if not completely, it's going to be angrily with other information that right. I could not perceive. If you have a six-way cross street, mm -hmm. on and for item. So what Owasvi's talking about is the secret to happy life here, a happy life there, is basically the golden rule and the Ten Commandments. You treat people the way you want to be treated, right? or even the silver rule, which is, a lot of people get it completely, uh, never to do anything to anyone else that you would find hateful the, to, done to yourself. The golden rule says, just treat them the way you want to be, whatever it is. Like, right. don't do that to them if you don't want to... Uh, treat your neighbor like you... Want to be treated. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, I, Susan. I have, um, I have a word to say on the... Um, I'm trying to keep up here. <laughs> uh, on the false gods, I, I want to uh, focus on something here. Um the prophecy in Owaspe, which is very powerful, um, 
predicts the uh, toppling the false gods in this time, in the time we're living in now. And it's called, the new era is called Cosmon. And it uh, more or less, you know, suggests a cosmic man where, where we reconnect uh, with the rest of the universe. So I wanted you to know about Cosmon because that's what we believe in and think is uh, all the unraveling that's going on now is necessary uh, in order to get a fresh start. And um, I, I, I wanted to mention one other term so that people have uh, understand this. Uh, we're, we're called faithists, and faithists have always been on the earth, but uh, at different, uh, in different cycles, uh, there's a, a lot of history uh, for anyone who wants to know what was going on here in the last 80,000 years. And by the way, when that figure came up, the first thing that sprang to my mind was that it's in total conflict with what <clears throat> paleontology and all the experts, quote-unquote, are telling us about the tenure of man on Earth, that he's been here for millions of years. Uh, our figures only show about 75,000 years for the existence of man on Earth. I think I would like to add to that that as far well, there's two things here. We don't take into consideration um, the radioactivity that comes from space. When there were meteor showers, and and this is a theory of mine, it's certainly not something I can prove, but you have a period of time when the meteors fell. Now the Earth's rocks are older, so when you do. Um, carbon dating, you may possibly get a much lo longer date. And I'm not saying the 6,000 year kind of thing to people. Right. Uh, but you, it would be a much less time. What even science says that, and this, and oh, and, and Osby does say about he, the creator prepares for a million years. So there might have been different hominids that built up to this. I don't know. But the uh, cerebral cortex did not start developing to 100,000 years ago. In Owaspi, the, the little race that was born that, that were kind of the, the teachers of all the rest of us who, mm -hmm. who they were advanced, um, um, became, had speech. So you see, the, the, the cortex gets developed 100,000 years ago. Speech which is the, the kind of speech we have, is the ability to, to express abstract mm -hmm. thought comes right. into being. And we start what we know as ourselves now. Um, mm. But I think what I agree with, with Susan is when we understand all this matter that has made, and even in our science programs now, they say about different times, this crashed into the earth and it cooled here. All this process right. might give us a much ancient time because of what's crashed into us is matter in space that's been out there longer than the planet. Now, th this is a theory. Right. Also, the as we go from the in the spiritual sense, <clears throat> we go through different dominions of these of the Ethereum heavens that may have a radioactive or radiant effect maybe i mean and again right. this to say oh i know for a fact uh, Pete, Pete, peter go ahead it's also showbiz it's <laughs> also showbiz you know like um <laughs> the um experts have to uh, to get the, the the money to get the funding uh, they have to come up with a an older form of man you know you always right. see these uh, uh breaking news so uh, they yeah it's just it's, it's BS. I mean, the, the, they have extended it. They, they, I, I tracked it. And f first it was 100,000 years that we lived here on Earth. And then it was a million. And then the next guy uh, upped him to 2 million. And now I don't know how far back they've gone. But they keep changing it. Well, but, well let, me, um, let, me ask you, let me ask you both this because, you know, on Truth Be Told, we talk a lot about, you know, in the paranormal world, UFOs, you know, uh, how how did how did we get here on Earth? You know, and even in the Bible talked about potentially, you know, gods and all this stuff. 
does the the oh, Os- Ospi talk about our beginning of it, uh, of existence on this planet or yeah. uh, or how yeah, did we get let here? Me, let how me did take we... that. Let me let me start let me uh, start that. Please. Um uh, there were on this planet uh, 80,000 years the only uh uh humans on this planet 80,000 years ago were kind of a subhuman type of fitting in with the hominid uh category category. Um and um, what happened is that a an angelic race was uh, brought down and uh, embodied mm-hmm. on Earth, and 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 they uh, in order to raise up man, in order to create mankind, right. and uh, they were um, told not to mingle with the Earth people, the indigenous people. Uh, but they did, and they c- created the race of eye hens. Do I have that right so far, Peter? Yeah, the li- they were little people. And again, <clears throat> most of the book talks about white and yellow, but when you read about it later in Africa, the eye hens were of all colors. Hmm. But the point here is that the people who came to suppose, and again, I, I'm trying to be scientific, but I, <laughs> um, the the story goes that when a planet reaches a certain point for its development to bring man, right. which in I've, one of the definitions of man is is corporeal consciousness or consciousness of 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 abstract consciousness, right. that these angelic or essence beings of the essence of people who died on other worlds in infancy and childhood Mm -hmm. had to be whole you need a full corporeal experience to be full fully created being so they died early in infancy they became very uh, profoundly uh, educated in the ways of the spiritual life but they had not the Mm -hmm. base understanding of corporeality. Mm. And so their job is to come on any world. What Oswe says is this is not the only, you know, it's not a backwater God sitting (laughs) in empty space that created on it. Worlds are going in and out at infancy, maturity, dying, just like people, animals, Mm -hmm. sons, you know, star suns, galaxies. It's it's an ongoing process. So these these beings, these one time mortals on some planet, have not had a full education. They come and they mate. Now the story what what Susan is saying, one of the fascinating things is is it were were they supposed to really not mix and it wasn't time and they were gonna help that race of what they call Asu or also Adam. So Adam is a different kind of Adam than we understand. Right. Um, uh, weren't supposed to, or or they now, these beings, like little children, and with their desires, and they may, if you tell them not to do something, you know they're going to do it. Right. So, <laughs> that, um, I... but let, let me, I just wanted to point this um, out, that the the chief of the group, you know, tells him what to do, and he and he, they don't know about corporate, so they end up mixing. Some of them mix, and he says, "Oh, th- didn't you understand what I said?" That you know, it was like, "Oh, and plus these beings have never had the passions of the animal man, because they died in infancy or early childhood." Uh, so all of a sudden, it's like one of the Star Trek things, where. Um, you know, some being goes into Spock or someone says, oh, wow, all these feelings. I, I, this is amazing. <laughs> you know, th- this kind of thing. Right, right. Uh, so there's this mixing. S- S- Susan, Susan wanted to make a point about I'm sorry, that go ahead. the go. topic changes. Um, uh, this is the thing <clears throat> that after uh, doing a thorough study of Owaspe and the records of the race, I saw that uh, 
not only did the original uh, Ihens um, uh, intermingle with the ground people, the earth people, but uh, this is the entire history of the human race is intermingling uh, and sometimes forbidden. So there, were, uh, there were some cycles in which the Ihen women were raped hmm. uh, in the fields while they were working. Yeah. Uh, and so um, the, the bottom line here is that evolution is uh, <laughs> it's another lie. Uh, all we ever had on this earth was the mixing of the races. And this is part of the prophecy for Cosmon itself, for what's happening now and what will be happening in the future, that uh, and thousands of years from now, probably, uh, the, the races will be so mixed that there won't be any more races. Well, and, just and I feel that ra I feel that <clears throat> race is one of the key issues of of this these times. And that's and you, I feel that what's going, what's going on in Ukraine, what's right. going on with the yes. refugee crisis, all over the place. Yeah, I think the with term our obsession with Black Lives Matter, all of it. The um, the term race, a lot of people forget, um, has been used in many ways. <clears throat> Even in Owasso, he says your family race. Right. The North America, all all people on North America, from an anthropological thing, who have the same customs, were the North American race. The they used to be the Germans with the German race, the Austrian race, right? Um, and really looked as another person. The royalty and their genetic superiority with that race, and how you know that whole thing of the king, and they just got mm -hmm. they're just better folks. Right. Now, if you got a bigger wallet, with more money. Now you the better folks. That, yeah. Um, kind of thing. Um, and to complete my thought, the prophecy is for brotherhood. This is really what, what we love so much about OASPE. Uh, this is what's happening. This is what's happening now, and this is what our goal is, universal brotherhood. Well, just because because of time and people in the chat room have already said you need to have these two back and do a part two because we're i think we're just touching the surface on this oh yes um yes. and so but <laughs> but i do want to ask you both this you know such as the holy bible uh you know they have the rapture and you know revelations and all this um because again i don't know this bible a wasp a waspy could you talk about any type of predictions of what is to come? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. We've got prophecy galore. And we understand that there is a great deal of destruction uh, on the way uh, and in the present. And that it is the forerunner of, of, of the new time, of mm. the cosmic uh, time. It's unavoidable. Um, Peter? Yeah, I was going <clears> to, <throat> I think there's, <coughs> I'm, oh, I'm sorry, my throat is, is scratchier and sounds, makes me sound older than I <laughs> want to sound. Not, um, not, used, <laughs> not used to talking so much, huh? Well, it, I, I did, you know, in anticipation, though I wanted to be, you know, like, oh, this, I'm going to just be cool about that. Of course, I was up half the night saying, this, how's this going to go, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Well, so far, it's been uh, going great on both ends, so but you guys the, are doing great. <clears throat> Uh, the time we, we, it has to do with pl all planets supposedly like the earth all corporeal planets where people are created to f for immortality mm -hmm. go through the same basic cycles though they some of the events may be different from the beginning of right. their particular quote unquote humanity to the end to the final physical perfection, if you will. Hmm. Um, so it's a process of, of going, we think of ourselves like here, but we're talking about, it's. let's say it starts over here, but actually we're going more and more inward and inward and inward to, to a center from one sense, or if you want, upward, upward. Um, um, I wanna add uh, to uh, answer Tony's question about prophecy. Um, that this uh, new time, we're in a new time, 
uh, we're edging our way into it, is a time of light, greater light. This is a, a, a cosmic thing, and you can see it on the on the Tzavokim chart that I referred to, the the uh, fold-out in the center of Oaspe in the Book of Cosmogony and Prophecy. Um, there is more light, heavenly light, good light, powerful, creative light uh, coming onto the earth now. It, it, it's here now. Um, don't think that this is entirely a positive thing. Uh, when you enter these studies, you see that the, the new light, increased light brings, uh, empowers uh, e e even evil things. It's a, it's a little complicated, but um, the power is there, the light is there, and this is something that has been causing uh, the confusion that's in the world now. Yeah. That's, the that's greater a, light. It's, it's, go ahead. It's causing all this confusion. Mm. Um, There's what, a great deal of confusion. <coughs> People don't know what to think anymore. And that's the light because it's pushing us toward the inner understanding. Mm. And another way of looking at it, look at the, what we were talking about before we got on the air. The technological expansion <laughs> is so mind-boggling. Right. Um, this is all light, but you know, it, Peter, I, th I think Oaspe says that every planet that reaches the stage of Cosman has a it is in a uh, juggernaut of mechanism and technology. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, am I right? From what I understand, yes, because it's it's so much knowledge pouring out um, that. Uh, it, it's just hard to digest. It's like, how can I eat the whole pie right, in one bite? Right, right. Uh, I've tried. But also yeah. I want to point out these cycles. Is, even when the light comes, there's also the darkness has been doing what it wants or the, the, the false teachings. So when the light's coming down, it starts disrupting those strongholds. Mm -hmm. They jump down on us mm. because their world, their hold on <laughs> things is falling apart. Right. Um, in, in fact, I, th I think we're in a time of uh, an almost equal balance between the light and the darkness at, at this time. And the future, what the future holds, and when I say the future, I mean I'm looking at uh, several decades, uh, is where the light be becomes more uh, dominant than, than the right. darkness. Mm. This is what we're looking forward to. This is a philosophy of hope. Uh, people have lost hope and they've lost faith uh, because they're uh, in a quandary over all the lies we've been forced to live with. Right. But um, this is a light that's coming and light that's here now, and we're meant to do creative things with it. And since, you know, just like, it, you know, that everything has its similarities here, when what we're in now is sort of like, I'm just going to use it because it's probably me, not quite adolescence. But adolescence is this this time. Uh, it's very painful, growing pains. Where we're, we're yeah. trying to hold on to the past. We want the future. Right. And one of the right. definitions in right. one of my books, my my uh, uh, college books, was they, and they said it humorously, but it's a certain truth that adolescence is the natural time of insanity. <laughs> Okay, so on the child's side, they want to be free, but yet they want to be told what, what to, to do. do. The parent wants to give them freedom, but is too afraid to give them to them. So there's a tug of war. In Owaspi, there's an, an, an energy um, called esphoma. Esphoma is pictured as two arrows going in the opposite direction. In the terms of the New Testament, the sheeps and the goats hmm. and and you see it here and i'm not going to get into s uh -huh. social political stuff but people become I, so i'd like fixed. to get into the sheep and the goats when you're done okay definitely we get so fixed in an ideology like my party is like my team i don't care what they do right instead of my country so susan 
um, the sheep and the goats, this is an interesting um, motif because it uh, it appears in Oaspe and it also appears in the Holy Bible. Uh, and uh, look at how it was predicted 2,000 years ago in the Holy Bible that this is a... Um, a way of expressing the uh, dividing of the way, the dividing of humanity, going uh, each segment going its separate way. And uh, <clears throat> this is another uh, answer to Tony's question about prophecy, because this is uh, the main thrust of what is happening now and what is destined to happen, that we will... Uh, the, you know, the opposing forces in the world today uh, will uh, separate, will divide. Uh, there's uh, plenty of stuff going on in the world that uh, mm -hmm. is a good example of that. Um, the uh, final verse in Oaspe, which is about three quarters of a million words, it is a 900-page wow. uh, volume. Uh, the final verse uh, uh, indicates the dividing of humanity and the triumph of of goodness on on earth wow. and uh and tony yes. uh, another part of prophecy is that america america is called guatama in oaspe and we are destined to lead the world into the into the new light oh that's let, great let, to hear let me make a comment <laughs> on that um, going back to the time that we talked about the the I, the Iron people and the the Asu um, people, uh, the 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 ground people, the ground people. Well, I think Asu was more like they picture them in the kind of a boreal, but you know they're tree people. But they're right, yeah, they're just right. they you know sort of like like the chimp. They went on all fours. That's one right. of the reasons they call them ground people. Right. No, but I'm saying the picture of Asu with the, in the trees, it's like, um, and there's a type, a type of monkey that I saw, or ape, that almost looked that somewhere in East Asia that has a very kind of human build hmm. and kind of fits this type of Asu. But <clears throat> what I'm saying is that the, that the, um, uh, leader, the archangel they were talking about, who becomes the first god or superintendent of the planet. Right. Um, he, the, they talk about civilization starting from like Pan, from the east coming west. Now we see historically civilization move from east to west. Right. This continent was to be the place where all the peoples and shall we say the the end game the final culmination and mixing of all peoples and tribes into one nation right so the it's idea of the meeting of the nations right so set this the this this individual called Seth Ante, Seth Antes was to kind of, you know, like when they talk about eyeballing you, he like imprints this energy that is only here in North America hmm. that will foster what we're talking. So when we, when we talk about days, we have to, you know, people say, or even in the New Testament, another way that I use for Cosman, and the people call it the New Age, it's still the same thing, but so is the messianic age but it is an age it is not like well oh, i'm going to sit on the throne it's it's our own learning to judge ourselves mm -hmm. to judge to and, and you know he says in this period of time the whole species has reached comprehensible judgment mm. <clears throat> in the early days and for and for and for prophecy, it, it, uh, this is the first cycle where we will not have a prophet. Uh, there will be thousands of prophets. That, that ties right in with what you're saying. It has to come from the individual working things out for himself. So the, the other piece about that is before, think about this, think of, of these transcendent beings. I want to use the word angels um, or essences of, of intelligence that right. were once mortals. Um, used to lead us by the hand and teach us. And so you had more strict mystery schools and right. education. In this 
era in Cosmo. There is no leader forth. A, a Jesus or an archangel with a big trumpet isn't happening. But thousands and then millions of regular people, because they're now de developing the essence of their higher nature or their divine nature or that part of the creator that lives in everything. Mm. And so we have to, and that's why people are at such different degrees, even with our faces group, of development. Because in one sense, and I'm going to use the word God, we are raising God, our own higher nature, our own, I like the word uh, in, in, in less spiritual terms, our ethical nature, mm -hmm. our wow. ability to rationally and by our own nature want peace and no violence. Well, I'm going to have to have you guys back because I've actually already went over time, but you guys are both so fascinating. I didn't have to say a word, and I loved it. <laughs> um, it you guys are the— Just sit back and listen to uh, me and Peter. It is because, you know, I some things that I know, I, I'm one of those guys I know a little bit about a lot. This one I knew nothing about, so it was a joy just to learn and be a student of you guys. And I know people in the chat room were just, some people said they, they love uh, uh, you, you both and want to know how they can, you know, get a hold of you, you know, watch more stuff about you. And then, you know, they also, oh, uh, oh, Ospi, they want to know more about it or they already knew about it and they, they love the teachings of it. So, um, well, here's the thing. It. There's others of us. I mean, it is so small. Right. It, and, and But also it says, that because there, it, one of the things it says in Osby, and I think this is really important, the administrative officer of the planet in Osby, I don't want to use the word God, because people, you know, got their own thing about right, right. God. But the, admin, <laughs> the chief administrative officer says, do you think I'm only going to use the faithless, meaning the people who know about Osby? I am raising up all kinds of people to bring quote unquote the kingdom right. all the progressive movements the people who are are fighting for peace the the people who are um the quakers um right. all these people coming together like as i said I, um, i'm associated with the quakers and in osb they said you know quakers really are faith as people who who in heart but they don't have the rights and ceremonies but it's against war right social justice um but the old, the, the progressives in the Islamic faith, the Jewish faith, we're all working together in these movements to make better housing, right. to end ra racial violence, to blah, blah, blah. I don't care if you're an atheist. It don't make any difference because if you're a rational, uh, moral, ethical, even that you say you don't believe in a creator or, the, or, the, or a God, you believe in that essence because you live in it. Right. <laughs> Right. And you can go to church and cry Jesus, Buddha, whoever you want, and be out there robbing and sealing, oh, yeah. thinking you're going to get to heaven because you're going to call on him. Well, I don't think the creator is a fool. No, no, no. <laughs> we we wouldn't have created fool. all this. That's like a, you know those parents that know what their children are doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know. like, we knew you snuck out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, thank you go, uh, both so much. And, and Susan, how do people find more out about you and uh, all your book? Because you have tons of them. Um, the usual way, I guess. Um, but Peter is um, vice president of UFK, which is the United Faithists of Cosman. And we have um, meetups all the time oh, nice. and meditations. And we welcome uh, yeah. people who want to improve themselves and improve uh, other, uh, other things as well. Right. And even though we have, for the sake of having an organized organization, religion, we do by consensus. We have a board and we have titles, but there's only one ruler and that's the infinite being, the great spirit. Right. Um, but for convenience and also for doing good, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, well, one way is to contact the Universal Faithless of Cosman. Um, you can call 
um, uh, Joan Greer. I'm, I'm trying to think. Joan, wait, wait, do you know Joan's email address, Susan, offhand? Um, I do, but um, do, do you have any number handy, P uh, Peter? I have her. I, I have her number. I can give her number. Um, well, what about your number? Um, I guess spirit has moved me to or, something uh, something I didn't want to do because I'm really like, you know their, uh, yeah. their website is you just type in Universal Fetus of Cosmic. Cosmic, yeah, and I'll put that in the and, chat and room that's so where the people. contact information is. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. Go through that chat. I, Boy, I got out of my number, but I got to get now. I got to get out of my shell, right? <laughs> yeah, I put uh, I put it in the chat room so people can see it there. Okay, cool. So yeah, that that would be the best way. Just go to the site. Um, oh, before we close that, I really want what I read to you before. Because, oh yeah, yeah, please. Because this is an important part. Because a lot of people who get in to the Owaspi, uh, and I understand because I totally disliked organized religion as such <laughs> but these are the three major definitions of religion a pursuit or interest to which one ascribes supreme importance that is anything from the stock market zippy to chimp <laughs> to the creator well, um, well haven't they made a religion of it of money Right. Yeah. Well, it's well. We can get a whole thing of mammonism. Right. Right. Mammon is the Babylonian god of wealth and individual capital. Both in OSB and the regular Bible says you, you're either going to follow God or mammon. You can't do both. <laughs> right. Um, so um, now the second one is a particular system of faith or worship. The last one is the one we're most familiar with because where we live in this country, the belief and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods. Mm. So um, one of um, a friend of mine, an associate, Dr. Um, Glenn Kendall, he is working on the construct of the difference between theology and creology referring to the creator. Oh, I love that. And so, oh, I have Joan's email address. Go, go, go ahead and give that, and then we'll close out because I'm going to get you guys back for okay. part two. Joan, Joan H. Greer, one. They all run together at Yahoo. Perfect. And I want to thank and I you have both. Her phone number is. Should I give her phone number? Is it okay to give? Uh, the the only trouble with the phone number is that they're so busy. Uh, they take a long time yeah. to listen yeah. to their, uh, right. e but uh, I'll, we can uh, give it. All right, let's stick. Let's stick with the email address. Let's do the email first yeah. because yeah, we are infinitely small as a group. for now, for now. <laughs> but again, it's something. <laughs> what I'm saying, the idea here, we don't proselytize, which really does make it difficult. Right. Even the Quakers once proselytized. There was a time that the Jews, mm. in, about the time of, of Mohammed, were proselytizing. <clears throat> so you get a base. Right. But we don't proselytize. And we're always trying to figure out how do we advertise without advertising, <laughs> which we're sort of doing it's now. Called word of mouth. Um, and what you're uh, doing now. We're instructed not to try to convince conceited adults. Right. And the uh, focus uh, of the mission is children. Right. And, and that's the other thing, to get to a point where, and right now we're not, I don't think in an age it's cool because there's too much crazy evil stuff going on, but where children who have nobody will be, ad will be adopted by these communes. So mm. this is a, a very important part. First, human beings other than indigenous people who have kept kind of contact with Earth Mother. Right. First, <clears throat> empires. Next, de democratic republics. Then, small communal groups interacting with each other of no larger than 3,000 people. Hmm. Because they have to, according colonies, to... Colonies, really. What do you say? Individual colonies. Yeah, colonies, communes, um, extended families. Of like-minded people. Each yeah. one kind of with a specialty. Right. And a lot of interaction between them. Right. But it is an evolutionary in the sense of evolution, in the sense of development. 
these things don't happen overnight. They also happen, uh, like we said, we hit Cosman, which we have comprehensible judgment, meaning that people can think for themselves. In the early days, according to what Owasi says, it was only 1% of the population that had immortality, mm. and they were more like brutes. <laughs> okay, then the next cycle, 10%, blah, blah, blah. About the time of Moses... And by, by the time... By the time of Moses, it uh, reached 98%. Yeah. And now mm -hmm. it's 100% of humanity capable of spiritual light. Mm -hmm. And not being bossed around. The ground around. people had no spiritual light, and they had no speech. Right. And they, went, they, they could exist in the lower heavens, but they would go out because the intellectual ability of having that frontal cortex as a, a development spot for, right. for uh, essence is a very important thing. They didn't have it, so they would just kind of go back into the ocean of, of creation. kind of. Well, thing. do you guys promise to come back for a part two? Yeah. Su I, Susan, I got you. I, I got promise. A, okay, I, got, I have two yeses. So people in the chat room, you guys can applaud now. And uh, But thank you both, and it's been a pleasure. Uh, this is Tony Sweet with Truth Be Told. And so Mondays is uh, uh, Robert Hensley does the Minute Room Report. Uh, Wednesdays, we have uh, Bonnie Burkert, who does the uh, uh, Truth Be Told Transformation. Of course, I'm here every Friday. And you guys keep a lookout for our, on our website and social medias. And uh, make sure you like, share this show. I know there's a lot of people said this was one of the best ones we had. So out of, you know, six, 700 shows, please, if it's that good, please share it to everybody else. Other than that, we're out of here. Uh, I'm Tony Sweet with Truth Be Told. Till next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. This has been another episode of Thank Truth you. Be Told. Thank you so much for watching. Recorded live at UBN Go Studios in Burbank, California. Join us on social media. Facebook, Truth Be Told Radio. Instagram, Truth Be Told Paranormal. Go to Truth Be Told Worldwide for more information on upcoming shows.